Is the Tesla Semi the real future of the American trucking industry, or is this another one of those extremely hyped up products that is likely to cause more damage to the electric grid than benefits? Well, now that the Tesla Semi is officially on track to be delivered at the start of December of this year, I think right now is a perfect time to understand whether or not these trucks are viable and how much of the total cost of ownership will actually benefit the end user. So strap in folks, because we have a lot of numbers to analyze and a lot of questions to answer. But as usual, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's see what Tesla has announced regarding the semi project and what's the timeline for deliveries for the next one year. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm really excited about this product because at the end of the day, the transportation industry for heavy duty is one of the most polluted in the entire world and the EV industry for consumers and cars is only a small portion of global CO2 emissions. So it's very important that a product like this gets onto, onto the market as fast as possible. Basically, Tesla has said that Pepsi is gonna get the initial units of the Tesla Semi delivered by the end of November and the start of December. Now, the reason why this should be taken with a little bit of a caveat is because obviously these guys have delayed their deliveries by over one year. Pepsi was initially expected to get their Tesla Semi at the end of December 2021. And so this delay is not really a good thing. And what it most likely shows us is that Tesla is able to finally deliver pilot test units for Pepsi, who's been waiting for a very long time to explore electrification. But the real letdown for me is that Pepsi seems to be the only company right now interested in working with the Tesla Semi in the short term. There's actually a lot of other companies that have launched heavy duty and medium duty products for electrification over the past two years. And these companies have been working with a lot of different stakeholders to test out and validate their electrified platforms. And so it's very weird that the Tesla Semi, which is obviously developed by one of the biggest EV manufacturers in the world, is right now only being delivered to one customer in potentially a small pilot test. And so either that could be a sign of the current macroeconomic conditions where companies don't want to invest in expensive electric vehicles, or it could be a sign that Tesla Semi could be more expensive than most companies would like, and the obviously lagging infrastructure could slow down their investments. But to be honest, I don't think that's really the big problem here. The bigger problem with a product like the Tesla Semi, even though it's going to reduce a lot of emissions, is the fact that the amount of raw materials taken to build one truck is simply immense. Lithium prices have already skyrocketed over the past two years due to the pandemic. And to be honest, this could be one of the reasons why the Tesla Semi was already delayed from the start. Now, although battery pack costs have come down over the past five years, they're actually expected to start rising again because obviously lithium demand has outstripped supply. And right now, Tesla's only using their traditional cells, not their revolutionary 4680 cells, which means that their pack costs are not going to be dependent on their rapid technology innovation in-house. Instead, it's going to be dependent on outside supply chains because obviously Tesla depends on Panasonic for the manufacturing of their cells. And because that 4680 cell provided 5x the energy density and a significant more amount of range and power in a very compact form factor, it's quite surprising that this cell is not being put in probably the heaviest and biggest product Tesla makes. Their energy density is likely significantly more critical than any other vehicle Tesla makes. Now, if you look at the specs, it's definitely extremely impressive. They're able to reach a 300 to 500 miles range, towing 82,000 pounds, which is the limit that is provided to EV semi trucks. And because the average dollar per kilowatt hour of electricity is significantly cheaper than diesel, you are able to save around 200K over the time of three years. But the really important thing to keep in mind is that the upfront cost of the Tesla Semi is gonna be higher than any other class eight semi truck. So that's gonna automatically filter out a lot of customers that would have invested in this product. Because let's be honest, this truck is not going to sell to your average dough. This is only going to be sold to corporate businesses who have an ESG mandate to reduce emissions. And so really the only place the Tesla Semi is going to make sense is in areas where there's already an established mega charging network, meaning the companies that operate fixed routes and that operate less than 300 to 500 miles a day. 
because even though Tesla markets a charging time of 30 minutes for 70% range, it takes a lot of time for you to charge over 90% for a battery. So chances are realistically, it's going to take you around an hour to two hours to charge this thing to 100%. And as we know, driving conditions affect the range of EVs significantly. And when you're hauling 82,000 pounds, that driving difference is going to be amplified. And right now, Tesla's super high power charging stations are not rolled out everywhere, and it's still yet to understand how those will affect the electric grid, because obviously we've already had so many troubles with California managing solar and wind technology. And although, yes, the fueling costs for the Tesla Semi are going to be cheaper, the upfront costs paired with the fact that the infrastructure is still a little bit constrained means that you're not likely going to see a lot of these on the road just yet. Instead, you're still going to see pilot tests being conducted as customers establish just how much money they want to allocate towards ESG initiatives. And because obviously EVs do lose range over time, especially when they're charged with a very fast, high power charging system like we're expecting for the Tesla Semi, then chances are that overall in the long term, if the range of a product goes down, then the efficiency of the battery is also going to go down and that could end up hurting customers in the long term. So right now, really the bigger customers are going to be the ones that buy the Tesla Semi, not the smaller fleets who don't have the budget for it. But obviously, don't get me wrong, the Tesla Semi is a must needed product. Somebody has to take that charge to help commercialize electric vehicles for the heavy duty industry. And we're already seeing a lot of other companies do this as well, like Nikola Motors and Plug Power. And overall, as the costs come down of not only batteries, but also more nascent technologies like hydrogen fuel cells, we should start seeing EV trucks on the road much more in the next decade than we've ever seen in the past. And although some people will not like it, it is going to be a change for the right reasons. Now, obviously, the main concern is whether or not Tesla can ramp up the production for this Tesla Semi effectively. They've already invested in a lot of factories, and right now, a lot of their focus is on the Model 3, the Model Y, and some of their higher margin products. And as we've already seen in the ICE business, it's typically very difficult for companies that are so good at one thing to transition into another business segment. And so overall, that could be a slight hindrance to Tesla's business. But as we all know, these guys are very good at commercializing new products. And so chances are the Tesla Semi could be a successful product. We just don't know how big of an impact it's going to have in the next five years and whether or not there's going to be a big saturation in the EV market for heavy duty trucks, because obviously there's a lot of stakeholders and a lot of other companies also developing innovative products.